there Storm fans, Brent Cook, and well, this video is going to be a little bit different. And by that, I mean my mic is directly in front of my face. I've had a few people leave comments recently about the audio quality, and well, I'll be completely honest with you. I like delivering high quality videos. That's my thing. I get enjoyment out of, you know, that. So I'm going to try to fix that for you. Today I'm testing having the mic much closer to my face. I usually have it off camera. Let's see how this impacts the video. I would certainly be interested in your feedback. So let me know if this is an improvement or if I should go back to things not covering my beautiful, and by beautiful, I mean chunky face. All right, well, enough of that. Today we are playing Lurus Lotus Breach, my favorite modern deck. And while I have a modern 5K that is local to me coming up here in Syracuse, New York in just two weeks, and I need to prepare for it. So we're running the deck that I will be playing. And if you look at the list, it hasn't changed much since my last video about three weeks ago. And the, well, why haven't I played the deck in three weeks, right? Well, I've been attesting for Legacy Eternal Weekend, Vintage Eternal Weekend, and a Pauper PTQ. Well, all of that is behind me now and I can focus on modern. I'm sorry if you subscribe to this channel for the modern content. It's been a little bit slim recently. Well, hopefully you do enjoy this. And like I said, it's not that different from what I was playing previously. The real change here is we have one less Hermit for plus one Fatal Push. That's not a slight against Hermit. Hermit has been amazing. I love the card. The reason why Hermit's gone down is that the Blue White Azorius deck that it was added to the sideboard to beat has fallen out of favor. It is now the fifth or sixth most deck on MTG Goldfish, or most popular, I should say, deck on MTG Goldfish. And we just don't need as many copies. So instead, we're running a second copy of Fatal Push for Burn, which is the third most popular deck on Goldfish, but also Hammer Time, that is the second most popular. And if you wanted to, you could even board in Fatal Push versus Blue White Tempo. I'm sorry, Red White Tempo, which is the most popular deck in the format. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to have the extra Fatal Push. I've been receiving a lot of feedback about how people don't like Slaughter Pact. I think this comes from... A lack of understanding, if I'm being completely honest, and it's not a slight against anyone that dislikes the card. But people are often referring to like picking off creatures and then being forced to tap down. That is not what the card is here for. It is added to the board as a tutor target for wish to kill an Eidolon of the Great Rebel, so that way it's more mana efficient, it opens up lines where you can win faster against a deck like Burn where time is everything. But also, it opens up lines where you can wish claw activation, go get Slaughter Pack, kill an idol on, and then win the game. It's all about efficiency. And I know that one mana doesn't seem like a big deal, but there's a very big difference between one mana and zero mana. So that is why we're playing copies of Slaughter Pack. If you're just boarding it in to kill random creatures, you're doing something wrong. I just want to throw that out there. If you have any questions on this deck list, I am happy to answer those in the comment section down below. I love answering your questions. I truly do. So definitely leave a comment. Um, but I'm not going to do a long deck tech today. This deck list hasn't changed in a few months. So I just want to hop on in and play some Magic the Gathering if you're cool with that. Um, yeah, but before we do, if you're interested in, interested in supporting us, you can go directly to theepicsfirm.com slash donation decks to submit your favorite combo deck to be featured here on this very YouTube channel. I received one today that I am super excited to play that I'll probably record either tomorrow or over the weekend. Definitely keep an eye out on it. It is bananas. And let's just say Infect is the win condition. Or, well, it at least can be. So get excited for that. We also have the epicstorm.com slash shop where you can get card singles as well as storm merchandise, including our mini token pack, which is perfect for keeping track of your storm and mana and paper play. It also comes with slime time, a progenitor ooze tokens. So you don't have to fumble around with dice. It's super easy to use and you know, it's worth it. For $13, you get 64 double-sided tokens. It's just great value. That's what I have to say. I hope you enjoyed the intro, short and sweet. Let's hop on in and crush some face. Welcome to match number one. We're on the draw and we're in the middle of revealing our modern commander, Lurus of the Dream Den. Our opponent also has a companion. So let's see what can happen here. I don't mind this hand, assuming that our opponent's probably on hammer time. Uh, I think that's a fair assumption to make, or at least burn. Inquisition hits a key card. We have the turn two wish claw into Lotus Field, plus it, you know, the the key action spell. So we do want to draw another twiddle effect, but this hand's pretty good. 
All right, I'm just going to hit the F6 key and see what our opponent's on. Blood Crypt. Okay, that's interesting. Might be like Zoomerjund or something. Thoughtseize. I think the correct pick here is likely the Wishclaw Talisman. Maybe the Inquisition if they're trying to protect something. And it was Inquisition. Draw. Okay, we're just going to play Misty and Pass. Play and activate Wooded Foothills. Okay, so it is in fact Jund with the Overgrown Tomb. Into Renin 6, you got it. So they're going to plus and return their Wooded Foothills. I'm going to fetch in response. Just grab another copy of Watery Grave and go to my turn. Okay, they're at 13 already. Echoing Truth. So I'm in a spot where I'm sort of just hoping that our Wish Claw lives. Because next turn I could activate Wish Claw for Lotus Field and then play Watery Grave and Echoing Truth back the Claw so that way they don't get to use it. And then likely have a win on the following turn. All right, Wooded Foothills activation. Opponent is down to 12 life. Picked up a basic forest. And the Wooded Foothills was put back to their hand. K command, that was brutal. Uh, we can discard an extra wish here. Might just put Lurus to my hand. I think that's the play. Hey, Lurus, come home. Pass the turn. What are you going to do, opponent? What if a hills is back? Five cards in hand still. All right, and they're activating. Nine life. Dashing Ragavan, okay. Ragavan hits. Ah, oh, kidding me. This is the dangerous part of playing discard spells in modern nowadays. Yep. Okay, that worked out very well for our opponent. Okay. Our opponent does have a treasure token hidden over here behind my sideboard. Just want to call that out. They went for the Luris. Okay. And a thought see. So that's probably gonna take the wish, but they're at seven now. A lot of discard this game. Don't know if we're gonna be able to come back from this. And the wish is gone. Opponent's at seven life. Plus the Ren. Pretty soon they're gonna have a Ren and Six emblem as well. Draw. Bobble. Okay, so I can use the bobble on myself to see if I have a lotus field coming. I do not. So I think I'm just going to shuffle the deck so I don't draw a fetch land I don't want. Grab the steam vents. And let's pass the turn. Draw. Another twiddle. Uh that hurts. Okay. So that says that there are sagas in our opponent's deck and they just haven't played them yet. Let's just slide the sideboard down. Dash Ragavan. Okay, so we're going to fall to eight here. Ragavan, Underworld Breach. Okay. This was a card I was thinking about being a good draw last turn before our opponent played the Spell Bomb. Because if we had drawn the Breach, we could have played the Breach, escaped for Wishclaw Talisman, and escaped... Uh, I guess we drew the Bobble, so you couldn't do both. But 
I was primarily just thinking about escaping Wishclaw. Okay, so I'm pretty much priced into bouncing the Ren here. Because if I don't, they get to make an emblem and then just um, retrace these discard spells over and over again. Okay. Draw. Alright, I'm going to call it. That's game number one. Let's just head over to game number two. I'm not interested in Pact Indigation here, so those can get out of our deck. I do think that you can probably board in Fatal Push, Void Snare. Probably the Grape Shot as well. Board out some of these discard spells just because they do hurt quite a bit in the mirror. Let's board in the explosives. Did I say the mirror? Against the Ragavan decks, you don't really want discard spells in your deck. So that's 59. We can board in a Slaughter Pact. It's not really the purpose of it, but it's fine. You could also just maybe board in a second copy of Void Snare. But then you don't have one to wish for. Does that matter? Hmm. I think the second copy of Void Snare might actually be better here. So let's try this out. Answers Alpine Moon as well. There's a lot of things going on for it. Okay. On the play. Let's reveal our Luris. One land Lotus Field Hand. Unfortunately, not a keep. Have to ship this. It's saying a magic card, so I'll keep it. I think we're just going to bottom the second copy of Underworld Breach here. Okay, Breach to the bottom. Our opponent mulliganing to five. Okay, so let's start off. We're just going to go get our Watery Grave, cast the Serum Visions, and then play a Bobble. Yes, I would like to shock myself. As Serum Visions. These are two pretty good ones, but I don't think we want the extra copy of Breach. Definitely keeping the Lotus Field. And now we play a Bobble, pass the turn. And our opponent's upkeep, let's see what their draw was, or is. Verdant, okay. Bloodstain Mire, so they chose not to play the land that we knew about. Let's draw the Bobble. Okay. Larry West. We're just going to play a Wishclaw here and pass the turn. We're somewhat close to winning. If we draw a Twiddle effect next turn, we could go for it. And there's the Overgrown Tomb. There's a Saga. So currently, this color mana combination usually doesn't destroy Wishclaw Talisman. I was a little bit worried about Abrupt Decay there, but Saga doesn't cast it. We hit an Echoing Truth. I'm just going to cast Consider here. No, I'd like to keep that. So I did find a Dream Script, but actually, do I have a winning line here? I think the Echoing Truth draw might have changed it. I just need to think through this. So we could go to blue, play Lotus Field, put two cards to Graveyard. So that's seven cards in Graveyard. And then play Lotus Field, untap it, tap for blue, activate Wish Claw going up down to. We're going to go get a Dream Script. So up to five. Up to four, because I have to cast the second Dream Script. So four mana, Underworld Breach, floating two. The Breach floating two. Seven cards in graveyard, eight cards in graveyard, nine cards in graveyard with the other dream script. And I'd have to go twiddle, twiddle, echoing truth, and then replay claw. I think this works. I mean, I hope I'm not wrong. I'm going to go for it for science. I hope that I didn't miscount. All right, activate Claw. Get Twiddle. Okay. I would tap for red. Play Breach. Let's untap the Lotus Field. 
yes, untap. Okay, twiddle again. All right. Yes. And I can actually twiddle one more time because the Echoing Truth goes to the graveyard, so that's pretty huge. And now what we'll do is bounce the Wish Claw. Yeah, we got it here. This is a cool line. Untap the Lotus Field. All right. And now we play the Wish Claw Talisman. Activate the Talisman using the last black mana. Go get Tome Scour. Target ourselves. Woot woot! We did it! Okay. And now we need to twiddle. Wow, that was a really sweet one. Alright, Scour. Lotus Field Consider Visions. Yeah, Scour again. And remove the Void Snare. We don't really need that card. So it's usually, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the deck, you want to cast Scour, Scour, Twiddle over and over until you get no deck left, pretty much. And then you can just cast your Grape Shot. And every time that you go Scour, Scour, Twiddle, you gain one card in Graveyard and three Storm. Okay. From 16. Scour again. Cast Dream Script, untap the field. So you might be thinking, why don't you just cast Wish in a Grape Shot? It's not that simple. Uh, so the reason why that's not the play here is that we don't have enough resources to actually do all of that. Because you have to twiddle twice into the... Well, now we can cast our Grape Shot for lethal. But you have to twiddle twice into Wish, which is nine cards. That's why it's not just like a freebie play. Because you'll notice that we're actually just like barely breaking even with the loops that we're doing. So my graveyard hasn't been that stocked. Okay, escape these last few, and that's game number two. All right, so there will be a game number three against Zoomer Jund. Maybe just resubmit it. Okay, so game number three, reveal our Luris. Our opponent's going to do the same. And this hint's probably fine. I'll keep this. Okay. Wooded for Hills. Blood Crypt. I'm not super keen on the idea of playing Teleria West with our first land drop. I'd prefer to cast Consider and use Bobble. Just so that way we can potentially use this to get Lotus Field later. I'm not even sure what the right pick is here. It might be Consider. I, I don't really know. It would have to do a lot with the context of their hand. Underworld Breach, okay. Draw. That was a good one. Alright, so... I think I'm supposed to bobble here now. So the reason that this seems weird, because everything you've ever learned about playing bobble against these style decks is that you don't want to do it. I'm going to keep the visions. You don't want to do it on your own turn because it allows the opponent to discard. But when you have consider, it's an instant. So this way, I'm still casting two cards on my first turn and building up my graveyard because I'm going to consider on my opponent's turn. So that way, if I wait until their draw step, to use my bobble, I can't play a one drop on my turn, which is why I believe that's the wrong play. All right, what if I held 14 life now? I think I'm just gonna fetch and cast the consider. Why not? I'm trying to protect my life total a little bit here as well. We have the Misty for the Black Source, I don't need to shock. Uh, I'll keep the push. 
So that way, if they have a Ragavan or whatever, they're sort of priced into taking the Fatal Push. All right, so what is the correct choice with Thought Seeds this time, opponent? It is the Fatal Push. And there's old rags. You got it. Draw. And <laughs> we ripped the, the second one. Love it. All right, so let's fetch and cast vision we're not going to actually love this third land i'm going to keep this uh we're not going to do it in our main phase because our opponent could dash another copy of ragavan and we just don't want that to happen okay we're in combat now we can fatal push and then i'm going to hit that f6 key once again and uh just let my opponent do their thing on our next turn, I'm going to fetch and then use the Teleria West to go get a Lotus Field. Here's a Saga. Okay, so that long term represents a Nile Spell Bomb. And another Ragman. Okay. So I was rewarded for waiting. Alpine Moon! Yikes. I do not love that. We do have Wish in our hand, but I boarded in all of our cards that would answer this, so a little bit risky. Okay, we do have to worry about Saga as well, because the Saga um, is, one, going to make a bunch of beaters, but two, get a Spell Bomb. But I'm a little nervous about that. We're going to go get Lotus Field anyway. because It doesn't make us sacrifice any lands to put it into play off when the Alpine Moon is in play. But I did board in bounce spells and the EE, so we have a bunch of live draws to answer the Lotus Field as well, or to answer the Moon as well. So if I could draw one of the Void Snares, we'd be in great shape. Hmm. I'm just wondering what my options are with this Wish. Let's say I draw a blank, what do I do? And Ragavan. It's Island, okay. Come on, Void Snare off the top rope. Let's go. And the draw is... Wadded Strand. I think I'm probably just supposed to go get Luris here. I don't really see a point in Burning a Wish to like play a discard spell. Let's just pick up the Luris. All right, so they're going to activate the Saga, making a Construct token. On their turn, they'll probably draw, activate the Saga, make another Construct token, search for their deck for Nile Spell Bomb. And our plan at that point will be to use a for Gender Ooze to win the game. But we still have to find our answer to Alpine Moon. Okay. I imagine they're getting... Okay, they did get Spell Bomb. They thought for a minute there, so I was like, are they thinking about getting Needle? Like, what's the what's the play here? All right, so I'm going to take six and go to five. I don't really want to burn the Dreams Grip. Okay. Our opponent's going to get another treasure. So the Constructs will grow in size. Misty Rainforest. Okay. Draw another dream script. So theoretically, that allows me to double twiddle their stuff next turn. But still sort of far behind here. Play the Luris. I imagine they're going to spell bomb me in response. Just to deny me the bobble. Okay. So our graveyard has been exiled. Not the end of the world. Uh, I think we're probably winning this. I don't know. I don't want to focus on a line when our main objective is just to find the out to Alpine Moon. But I guess in order to stay alive here, I probably need to 
burn both twiddles and i don't love that because that makes playing the uh ave a lot more difficult although if i were to yikes draw the ee i could replay it off luris but obviously the lightning won't change that okay so we're in combat actually they removed my island am i just dead here pretty sure my island was exiled yeah it was Oh no, I was thinking like, oh, I just get island and uh, app. I am dead on board. I messed up. I guess it wasn't really a mess up. I just thought I had a line that I didn't have access to. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to take my death and draw a card. Okay. So we are starting this league out 0 and 1. Womp womp. Alpine Moon did a number on us. All right, let's draw that card. Visions, which would have drawn into Void Snare. Classic. All right, zero and one. Former great rounds of magic together and coming right up. Match number two when we're on the play. Let's get it. Okay, reveal the Luris. Mulligan. Jeez. I think I'm going to keep this. It's not the best hand, but... Having a Lotus Field just is so valuable that I don't think we're supposed to ship it. Okay, bottom of Polluted Delta, and let's get going. Delta, play Bobble. Bobble ourselves, see what we draw. I don't want that. And we can just fetch. Grab a Watery Grave. No, I would not like to shock myself and pass the turn. Wish, okay. So now we just need to draw a Twiddle, and this hand went from being kind of bad to reasonably good. Darn. Okay, take a draw. There we go. Pass. Basic Island. Scalding turn, pass. Okay. We're just going to go thin another Watery Grave out of the deck. The reason I'm not getting steam vents here is I know that I'm going to sacrifice some of these lands to Lotus Field, and I just don't want to uh, do that. So, all right. So I could play the field here. Instead, what I'm going to do is just put Luris to my hand because we don't really gain a whole lot by just like jamming the Lotus Field. And you never know what our opponent's playing. Like they might be a Blood Moon deck, and if they are, you did yourself a disservice by playing out the field. Breeding pool. What are you playing? Another copy of Scalding Tarn. Okay. <laughs> Three in a row. I'm going to play Luris. I don't imagine that this is going to resolve or even live, but at least if it lives for a single turn, I can get a bobble out of it. Okay, so we have a bobble. And I'm just going to pass. They're, they're probably not a Narset deck. I'm just going to pass. The reason why Narset matters, are they just Shardless? Okay, they are just Rogue Rhinos. Crashing Footballs, that's some power. I'm just going to do this now. Okay, fetch. Get the vents. Okay. So at least now I know what we're facing. Drop Bobble. Echoing Truth. Pretty good against some rhinos. Is this another one? Ah, uh, and there's the Blood Moon. I do have the Echoing Truth, though. And a basic island in play. Is Main Deck Moon normal now? I don't know. God, how dare they go after my Luris like that? The disrespect. Okay, so we just need to hope that our opponent doesn't have a force negation in their hand. Draw. Play the field. And, whoops, let's untap that. Echoing Truth? 
Does it resolve? That's a bummer. They had force back up. If we had another turn, I could actually wish for Void Snare, but instead we're just dead. All right. We lost game number one. I do like Pact Negation against them, so let's bring that in. Bring in a Void Snare to help deal with Blood Moon. I think we can probably board out a few cantrips. Probably Serum Visions because we're looking for speed here. On the play for game number two. Reveal our Luris. Sure. Okay. We're going to play a strand and play Mishra's Bobble. Look at our top card. Another bobble. I'm just gonna fetch that away. Alright, pass the turn. Echoing truth, okay. The forest, okay. So that tells me that our opponent might already have a blood moon in hand, or they're planning on having blood moon. Playing out the island or not playing the island because I don't want it to uh, get sacrificed to a potential lotus field. And jam claw. Alright. What falls? Or, I'm sorry, sulfur falls, not foot falls. Foot falls is the suspend card. Crashing foot falls. Take our draw. Active negation. So what I'm going to do here is use my claw to go get a lotus field, and then I'm going to attempt to... Actually, do I even want to do that? No, I don't think I do. I'm literally just going to pass the turn here. Uh, because if they use wish claw, they can't uh, play blood moon. And if they play blood moon, I have echoing truth. So there's no reason to burn the echoing truth. Okay, so currently they have endurance mana. And possible force negation online. Another copy of Lotus Field. Hmm. I wonder if they'll counter a wish. And then I just play E for zero. I feel like trying to force it here is not a good idea. Okay, so we can E for zero now. Is my E resolve. And I'm not going to play Lotus Field. And I thought a little bit about this while I was in the middle of casting Wish. And the reason I'm not going to is I have to sacrifice two lands. If our opponent does decide that they want to use Wish Claw for Blood Moon, I can play Lotus Field underneath the Blood Moon, bounce it, have Pack back up, and then win the game. All right, so it looks like they're going to uh, play a Footfalls here. Okay, so this one is coming down to one counter and suspend. So blood moon. Okay, so they just had it in hand. All right, they have four cards. All right, so they didn't give us back the claw. Well, they still could, I suppose. They didn't. Play Lotus Field. Attempt to bounce the Blood Moon. Alright, so we can twiddle our Lotus Field that came into play on tap, which is kind of nice. So we'll go up to 5 mana, 6 mana. What is this? Reading Pool. Is this a dispute? If I want to win this game, I think I have to Pact. Uh, alternatively, if I want to try to save the Pact, I could... Um, I could, like, consider and then just, like, look for another Twiddle. I think it's just supposed to Pact. Turn count is four. They still have four cards in hand. 
So uh, we know one of them is Blood Moon, so they could have a pitch spell here still, which would be very bad for me. Either one of them would win the game. Force of Negation or Endurance. So does Lotus, or I'm sorry, does Twiddle resolve? It does. Untap. Play Wish. Okay, so that was good. Now we can play Underworld Breach. And it appears that our opponent has hit the F6 key. So I'm not positive that we have it here, but we're going to try because our, we lose the match otherwise. All right, so I can escape one more time, which isn't good enough. So I think I'm supposed to cast this consider to see if I can hit another twiddle or something. Put that to the graveyard. Wish. That was actually pretty good. So now I can escape these. Untap. This is going to do it. Okay, so that consider was pretty good. Okay, untap Lotus Field again. Storm is 10. Not quite high enough to win with um, Grape Shot already but we do have the loop from scour sweet we got there dream script untap so we would need nine cards in our graveyard to do the loop i'm sorry to twiddle twiddle wish All right, so we have nine at the moment. Twiddle Twiddle Wish. Oh no, we would need nine cards to escape, so we would actually need ten cards. Okay, so it's from 16. So we have 11. Twiddle Twiddle Wish is five mana. That does cast Grape Shot. I believe that this does it. Okay. The first Twiddle effect. The second twiddle effect. Wait, am I wrong here? Yeah, uh, I can just cast Wish. I don't know what I'm doing. This just does it. All right, and then Grape Shot. Get out of here, Blood Moon. All right. At game number two, one more game left in this round. I'm going to leave it as it is. Game three. Against Shardless Rhinos. Keep. This hand is pretty solid. Just want to find a pack negation and second land. Start partying. Island, okay. Wish Claw, that's a good one. You do want to find a second land off this Visions. That was very good. We're going to keep all these. Pass the turn. Island. I'm going to fetch for the basic island here to help beat Blood Moon. Looks like they're going to fire ice or land. That's fine. Draw. I'm some caverns. And Blood Moon. Okay. We'll get an island and it resolves. So now we can play Lotus Field underneath the moon. We don't have Pact. At least not yet. I mean, I could try to win here. If they don't have force. Let's party. Like, I don't have any way of finding a pact of negation, so we might as well try to get our window here. Hell yeah, you can see to that void snare. Woot woot! Get out of here, triple blood moon. Alright, we're 1-1. One, one. Let's see if we can keep the heater rolling. Uh-oh, we're facing my friend Felix, who has been playing a lot of Hammer Time. So, 
We'll, we'll see how it goes. Felix's list is mono white that has silence in the board, not Thoughtsea. So silence is pretty scary. We're going to, I mean, it makes Pact not a terrible card if Felix is still on that list. Laris has been revealed. All right, so I'm going to keep this. We are a twiddle away from victory with this hand, and we're on the play. Okay, so Sculling Turn, let's play the Bobble. Bobble myself. Another Breach, we'll fetch that away. And I think I'm actually supposed to Tome Scour myself here, just to get more escape fuel. And there is no twiddles in there, so I like that. All right, draw off the bobble. Consider. Reasonable. A lot of wishes. Planes into Cigar Disease. Yep. Twiddle. Not quite. Uh, I think I'm just going to fetch an island and cast Consider. I feel like keeping this just too slow. I'm going to put it to the graveyard. We have eight twiddles. Let's just draw one. All right. Inquisition's not a terrible one. I would have preferred a twiddle. Maybe we just take the hammer. Pass the turn. We have eight twiddles, 42 cards in deck. There's Saga. Pass draw. Another fetch land. Hmm. I don't know what to do here. It's probably just play field. Or I can thin plus get Luris. Alright. I guess I'm going to play the Luris. Like, playing the Lotus Field here doesn't actually do me any favors. Alright, so let's... Do this. Pass the turn. Now Sagi goes up to two. My fear is if for some reason there's like a main deck uh Soul Guy Lantern or something. Alright, pure steel map. Okay, draw. Hmm. Alright, so I'm gonna play the Luris. Hopefully I'm not dead. Play Bobble. And play the Lotus Field. Just pass the turn. I would have had a turn three if I could just draw one of the eight cards in my deck that makes mana. <laughs> Alright, so... Floating mana. Hammer's going to come in. I didn't realize it was when it enters... Uh, play. That is when you cast. The more you know. So we're dead to another hammer here. Silent clearing, draw. Okay. Shadow spear. Allows another draw. So that is 13. I still get to block with my Luris. Bobble them, Ink Moth. So, I should go to one, assuming that there isn't another combat trick here. Block. All right, so Trample Over. Oh, I forgot about the, the light gain from Luris, my bad. So I'm at five. And this is it. We just have to find a twiddle effect here. So draw off Bobble. There we go. All right, sorry, Felix, I got gotcha. you. You can go to four, fetch another island. Play Breach. No, you can draw your Ink Moth. And easy peasy. Scour. Okay. Scour again. Dream script to untap. Give away some lands. 
So 33 is a lot of life, but we had a really stocked graveyard when we started this. So we should be able to just like multiple grape shop this game. Uh, let's cast a wish. Okay, and now we cast the Dreams Grip. Trees are field. Okay, so Storm's eight. You have 10 cards in Graveyard. It's six mana to cast Grape Shot three times. Um, so, okay, Felix conceded. Very nice of Felix. We're just going to go to game two now. Question is, do I still want these packs if I think that Felix might be actually playing the silences? From what I remember, there was only two of them, and I only know that because I'm friends with Felix. So should I uh, have them or not, or should I just trust that the Inquisitions are good enough? I don't mind a slaughter pack tier because it allows you to tap out a little bit more freely. I think I'm going to play like I don't know about the silences. Like Felix might not even have them for this league, so who knows? I generally don't like the void snare. It's just sorcery speed versus this deck is not great. And I do like the EE, and I think what we do is you just brought out two copies of visions. Because we're not looking to be a slow deck. Okay, game two versus hammer time. Double Lotus. A little bit awkward. Although, as a six card hand, I would probably keep this. Let's do it. I'm just going to look at this hand as a six card hand. Like, double consider is pretty quick. We just need to hit land two, and then some twiddles. Okay. Lanes into Sentinel. Memnite. Okay. There's land two. I don't think I'm going to respect the Asper Sentinel. Like, Felix can just draw a card. That's fine. I need to worry about just executing my game plan better. Let's cast the... I, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to put that to the graveyard. I just want Twiddles here. Castle, okay. Pass. There's a Twiddle. Sigurdazade and Hammer. Yikes. Okay. So we're going to take 12 going to 5. Play the explosives for 1. Felix is going to get to draw a few cards here because I have to twiddle the Memnite. Okay. Tap Memnite. If there's another equipment, like another hammer, I'm just dead. Yes. All right, so I'm going to four. King Moth, Ornithopter. Lurus was revealed. I don't know what their hand is, but they could uh, just put Lurus to hand, and they chose not to. Another field. Damn it. All right, we're going to pop the explosives for one and play a field here. Okay. So, in theory, if I drew... Uh, I'm just dead to the commando. That's a bummer. Okay. Um, in theory, if I drew a twiddle effect on my turn, I could win. Uh, obviously, that was before the commando came down. And I'm not going to get to see him next draw. Okay. On the play, I don't think I want the Slaughter Pact. Or maybe I do. Let's just leave it. All right. Game three on the play. Let's, uh, have, a, let's have a good draw. That would be nice. This is fine. 
dueling Larises. Let's just play out the E for one. Let's just get it on the battlefield so I don't have to mess with it later. Bobble, bobble them. Saga, sure. We have turn two, Wishclaw. This hand's actually pretty good. Uh, so we use Wishclaw to go get Lotus Field, and then we need to find a way of getting Tome Scour. Planes into Sigurda's Aid, sure. And that's our way of getting Scour. So if I could draw another Twiddle effect, I have a turn three. Saga. Ass. Okay. Hmm. I can't help but feel that Felix might have the silence, but I can't really beat it unless I draw one of the Inquisitions. I think I'm just supposed to pass here. Let's see if it's just like the Commando. Alright, so I'm going to activate the Wish Claw. Go get Lotus Field. All right, so that's a little bit awkward uh, because of the fact that it can kill the breach. All right, second planes. And an attack for three will fall to 14. Let's see if I'm allowed to get my land here. I think I'm willing to blow up the E. Okay. White white floating. Or white white available, I should say. Another cigar to seed. Draw. Wow. So if Felix doesn't have the the silence here, I think I win. Let's play the push. All right, play Lotus Field, sacrifice the two basics. Portal. All right. Am I allowed to have Underworld Breach? Damn. All right, so I just have to pass here. All right, so Saga's going to trigger. I can still win the game if I draw an Underworld Breach or another Twiddle on my turn. I imagine that there's like a Soul Guide or something uh, in Felix's list. That's going to stop me as well. I chose to play like I didn't know that Felix had the Silence and got burned. I think if I was just like playing... Kind of in a dirt baggy mode, I might have left impact and negation. I guess like you could argue that it might have been right anyway due to the Kulthar Commando being a surprise creature that uh, impacts Breach, but I don't know if that's the right thing to be doing. All right, Hammer's in play. Memnite. Another Saga. Pure Steel. Okay, so uh, representing lethal now. Um, but yeah, I just need to draw a Twiddle. Or a Breach. Seven Twiddles in the deck. Two Breaches in the deck, so nine hits. What would you be getting with the Wish Claw? It's got to be like a Soul Guide or something. If it's just like another piece of equipment that doesn't make any sense, it is Soul Guide. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to win now. And I hit the breach. Um, let's think through this. So I can tap. Hmm. I guess it's like kind of free to just cast the breach. Maybe it's not. If I play Breach, Felix uses the Soul Guide, exiles my graveyard. Maybe Felix wouldn't do it though. But assuming that Felix did, 
breach, would be in play. I would have no graveyard. I could activate Wishclaw using the floating red to go get a twiddle effect to untap the Lotus Field. Use the Delta for another land. I could play Wish. That's three cards. It actually might do it. Let's play the Breach. Okay. So we can fetch. Let's get a Watery Grave. Now I can activate the Claw. I think I actually want to leave the Red Floating. Go get Dream's Grip. Untap the field. Oh, my math off isn't off here. It is. Oh, crap. It's three cards, but I need four to escape the Dream's Grip. I'm, 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 I'm a mana short and a card short. Damn it. I was thinking when I cast the wish right here that I would be able to escape the dream script and I'm a card short. So a better line there would have been to just go get a piece of removal. I think. I don't know. I feel like I lost this one to myself. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we are now one and two. Match number four, and we're on the draw. We've opened up a hand that has no access to Lotus Field. It does have a Twiddle and a Breach. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Serum Visions could find Field, and then we're pretty close. I think I'm going to try it. I don't love this hand, though. I think that land number four is essentially like a mulligan. Go to Delta. Are they just on Mel? Okay. Blood Crypt into Monkey. Here. Draw. Considers a good one. I would guess that our opponent's probably on Grixis. I don't think Jund plays Polluted Delta. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to bottom both of these. I was hoping to scry into a land to give the Ragavan, and that just didn't happen. Now we have five lands. And Ragavan connects. We're going to fall to 17. Dream's Grip. Rock. So, well, we have plenty of lands to discard. This also could just be pure red black, the deck that did well in Vegas. No second land. Wish, okay. So now we just need to find Lotus Field. Cast this Consider, and I will keep that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just pass the turn. Okay, so the Ragvan's going to connect. We'll follow the 12. What is the reveal? Visions. All right, well, if we're trying to win on turn three, that might not be the end of the world. Okay, casting vision. Black Leaf Cliffs, okay. But I think it tells me that our opponent's likely just on the Rakdos deck from the Grand Prix, or Vegas, whatever you'd like to call it. It seems events. Okay, draw. We have six cards, so we go up to eight. This should do. Play Lotus Field, sacrifice the two lands. Land number one, land number two, cast Twiddle. Untap. Play Underworld Breach. And let's untap this land. Twiddle is on the stack. Untap Lotus Field. Cast it again. Exile land, visions, and misty. 
Okay, so we're untapping Wood's Field. Now we'll tap for red and play the Wish. Which is from number five. And now we go get the Tom Scour to create the loop. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just ate dinner. I feel like th there's a frog in my throat. All right, Tom Scour. Cast Twiddle on the land. Arm number eight. Scour again. Move some of these extra trips. Okay, so at this point we're just going through the motions. Alright, so we've milled most of our deck. We'll stop with four cards left. And now we can just play a couple twiddles into the group shot and uh, claim game number one. Alright, another dream script. And after this script resolves, we will cast Wish for Grape Shot. Add three red. And play Wish. Exile a few of these other cards. Spell number 19. And as we love on this YouTube channel, Storm 20 Grape Shot. And if for some reason we needed Pact and Negation backup, we'd have it. Alright, so we're facing red block. We probably don't want these packs. Those can get out of our sideboard. Or get out of our deck to the sideboard. Bring in the fatal pushes. Probably want the explosives. Void snare. 62. We could probably board out Inquisitions. You usually don't want them in this style of matchup. Maybe we board in the grape shot. You know what? I'm just gonna board in bolt snares. Let's do this. All right, Lyrus of the Dream done. Solid hand. Keep. All right, on the draw. I think this will likely be a scenario where I play Tillery West tapped. Oh yeah, they're definitely Rakdos. Yeah, I'm still gonna play the West. Play and activate Polluted Delta for Blood Crypt. What are we looking at here? Dashed Monkey. Okay, so we're going to go to 18. Well, have fun with your Underworld Breach. Boo! Boo! I think they probably take the Fatal Push here. And they chose Void Snare, which is interesting to me. I wonder why they selected that. Okay. I'm going to play Misty and just pass the turn here. I wonder if they thought that they could get me on fetching for a black source and then untap and blood moon me. Or they're just going to jam moon right now trying to cut me off the black source for push. Dothy Voidwalker. Okay. And now they're going to cast the Ragavan? Sure. I'm just going to push the Walker. Alright. They have three cards in hand still. Cast Consider. I'd like that. So let's cast the Visions. We don't really need more twiddle effects. I guess it's like kind of free to leave one on top so that way they hit it with Ragavan. And then we'll play our bobble. Pass the turn after that. Opponent's turn now. We're gonna let them connect with the Ragavan and then use our bobble. Evoke grief. Pitching K command, sure. I don't think I remember seeing that in the winning list, but I might be wrong. So they can hit the Echoing Truth or Twiddle here. And they chose the Echoing Truth, which might mean bad news for me. And there's the Blood Moon. I mean, they had double discard into their Blood Moon. They crafted this game plan well. 
We only have one out in our deck for that. Oh, I should not have six. I want to use the bobble. Look at their top card. Undying evil. Okay. That's a cute trick with their grief. We have one void snare. Is there out? Or we could hit the underworld breach. That was actually a pretty good draw. We need three lands in play so that way I can go tap these two void snare into breach combo. What is that? These empowerments for so they can discard that bad card they just drew. And uh knock me to eleven. Oh, I guess Undying Evil also works with Croxa, which is kind of cute. Ugh. Damn. They drew Inquisition. That was brutal. Alright. Probably not winning this one now. Come on, Void Snare. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> you got it. Draw. Consider. Okay, let's cast it. Yes, let's put Lotus Field to the graveyard. Draw a Delta that I can't use. So, one of the few ways we could maybe possibly win this game is if I put Luris to hand, and then we Jew Void Snare play Luris into Breach, into Twiddle, into the win. It's pretty unlikely, but theoretically it could happen. And they have a Dothy Voidwalker, so now they just have lethal. They hit a lot of runners this game. Okay, let's go to game three. Bummer. I think I'm just going to resubmit. On the play for game number three. Reveal our Luris. Sure. Opponent took a mulligan. And a five. I'm likely going to start this game off by getting Watery Grave. Against a Blood Moon deck, I would normally go and get the basic island. But we have this fatal push for Ragavan, which is one of the few ways that they could claw themselves back into this game, so I'm very interested in that. Our opponent decided to ship their five after a few seconds of thinking about it for a four. And now there's another pause. I think they're just digging for Blood Moon. Okay, they kept four. Like I mentioned, we're going to go get Watery Grave and cast Serum Visions. Rip was good. Do I want another? Actually, I do need another land. So, yes. I kind of forgot the fact that Lotus Field requires two lands for a second. Please forgive me, I haven't played this deck in three weeks. And our opponent just plays Swamp and passes. Okay. I'm going to go get Basic Island, cast Visions, leaving up the Fatal Push. Visions. Uh, that was very good. I think we just have a win next turn now. We do have a turn three win. Woot woot! Evoking grief. Is this their undying evil thing? Alright, twiddle down. That doesn't actually matter much here. All right, well, they have another Undying Evil type effect. Okay. Now it's going to come back into play and discard another card. They went after the Dream's Grip. That is fine by me. All right, so what I'm going to do here is scour myself, and I am not going to... Actually, I guess I need another land draw. 
All right, so I have to draw a land because next turn, if I tap uh, Lotus Field, I can't then play under World Breach and win. But I knew that I didn't want to draw the Wish, so let's get that out of here. Now I just need to draw a land. And if I don't draw a land or a Twiddle, I can just put Lurus to my hand. And I'm not casting the Fatal Push. I realized that uh, Fatal Push gained Revolt this turn. But what's the point of killing a Grief? Like, I just don't see it. Like, our opponent could be sandbagging a Dothy Voidwalker, which is just way more impactful than, like, a random 4-3 beater. Okay, now we're at 12. Land. Ding! Go to 11. All right, let's uh, cast this Underworld Breach. We already have the combo assembled in our graveyard. Okay, let's remove some of these extra lands. Add three blue. And let's start Totem Scouring. Okay, so it looks like our opponent's going to make us go through it. Not the end of the world. I don't mind doing this. Cast Twiddle, untap the field. Untap. Cast Scour. And we milled over the Grape Shot. So now I should be able to uh, do this a little bit more quickly. I should be able to like double Twiddle Grape Shot or something along those lines. 14 cards in Graveyard. So theoretically, if I wanted to play the most conservatively conservative way possible, I can cast the Grape Shot here, just so I don't lose to something like Surgical Extraction. And then with it on the stack, Twiddle the Lotus Field. So that way when Grape Shot's done resolving, I can just cast it for lethal. Right, so this is going to deal nine. It is to avoid surgical extraction for some reason if our opponent had it. Okay. Now they're going to 11. And Grimshot will deal 11. Woot woot. This should advance us to two and two. We are now a grizzly bear with one round left to go. Let's see if we can get it. I'd be happy with the 3 2. The fifth and final match, revealing our Luris. Put it mulligans to six. So if we hit land number two, this hand's pretty good. I'm going to keep it. I realize that it's a little bit sketchy, but let's do it up. Okay, opponent kept six. Looks like we're facing the same deck we did in the previous round. Okay. Draw. Not land. I think I'm going to start off on an Inquisition here. If they have a powerful three mana spell, I don't want them accelerating into it just so I can hit a land. But I might draw one next turn anyway. Okay. Inquisition. Troxa and Season Pyromancer, plus Grief. Well, I guess if I take Croxa... Yeah, let's take the Croxa. Saves me discarding a card, but they also might not be able to um, pitch cast the Grief. Okay, so Polluted Delta, we knew about that. Ragavan getting in. And Exiled Flooded Strand. Hopefully there's another land on top. Okay, activating the Polluted Delta. Is this a Seasoned Pyromancer? It is. Okay, so they're discarding the Grief and one other card. Draw. Not land number two. We'll cast Consider. I'm going to be super greedy, I think. Uh, am I really supposed to? 
I should just try to hit the second land. There we go. And I think I'm actually going to scour myself here, so that way when I cast the Breach, I'll have more resources. And next turn, I can play the Wish Claw. Alright, so next turn, we're taking five. Honestly, I might not be able to race this clock. And that's before they even play any additional threats. Alright, so we're going to fall the nine life here. They have three cards in hand. Exiled Steam Vents. They're just passing. Alright, total is good. If I can untap, there's a chance that I can get there if they don't kill my Wish Claw. Okay. So we'll go to four this turn. All right, so this is going to be our last turn coming up. Wish. Oh, no. If there's an Alpine Moon in their board, they can cast it. I would have the out to Alpine Moon in my hand already, but I don't have the time to do both. And there's passing. So I want to draw a Twiddle here. That's what it would allow me to win this game, is a Twiddle or a Lotus Field. Not Pluto Delta. <clears throat> so I think I'm dead. Um, because I can go and get Lotus Field. I can play it. I can twiddle it. And then I can cast Breach. But I don't have another blue mana to untap it. If that's going to be the case, I think I'm supposed to just play the Delta, pass, and try to Echoing Truth something. Weird that they don't have any damage. Well, I guess they didn't need to cast a damage spell there, but... Hmm. Begin combat. Just gonna bounce the Ragavan. So it's gonna knock me to one here. I do have the Delta as a land I can sacrifice the... Wait, they just missed their attack step? Wow, that sucks. Um, I'm still dead to a lightning bolt. Oh, well, I guess they have Blood Moon and nothing matters. Damn. That sucks. Well, I guess, uh, I don't know. Nothing mattered. They had Blood Moon the whole time. So if we drew a Lotus Field here, I could theoretically win, but I'd have to draw it, like, right now. No, that's not even true, because I don't... Never mind. That's not true. Just dead. So in my mind, I was thinking, like, oh, I the, the Bounce Spell's in my graveyard. I can play and recast, but the Bounce Spell's Echoing Truth, not Void Snare. So I'm dead. All right, next game. All right, we want these fatal pushes, void snares, engineered explosives, grape shot. Let's get these packs out of here. And the inquisitions. And that's 60. Okay, we are on the play for game number two against Rakdos Midrange. This is definitely a keep. Okay. So they've decided to keep their seven after being quite deliberate. And uh, let's see if we can just win. It'd be nice. Playing out the Scalding turn to maybe represent having a Fatal Push or something else. But on the end step, we're going to end up fetching four Watery Grave and casting this Consider. All right, Black Leaf Cliffs and a Monkey. Sure. Ouch. And let's cast the Consider. Uh, I'm going to bin that. I don't really need it. Delta, okay. Draw. All right, we're going to cast the Wish Claw and pass. Pretty close to winning next turn. 
I think if I draw a twiddle, we have it. All right, so Ryvan's going to get in. We'll fall to 15. And they're just passing. Okay. Explosives. All right. I am not going to be able to win this turn, so instead of attempting to win, I'm just going to pass while holding up Echoing Truth, and I can consider on their end stop. All right, Bloodstained Mire. I'm just going to take the Ragavan hit. Well, I'll follow the 13. All right, Serum Visions. And casting it. Two on the bottom. Swamp and Blood Moon? Is that at random? I don't remember. Discards two cards at random. Oh shit. Okay, that's kind of annoying. I'm gonna cast the consider here looking for something good. Underworld Breach. Okay, let's see what uh the Torak discards. Come on, these two. We always hit the Lotus Field. All right. We'll be fine as long as we can draw a Twiddle here. Damn. Visions. They have six damage. Yeah, let's stack it like this so that way they remove the Fatal Push from the deck. Roxa. Hmm. So that's going to pump the Torok. Discard a wish. Okay, so that's going to come back. And now it's going to pump the Torok again. We'll discard the Echoing Truth and hope that nothing bad happens to us. So we're going to be taking eight here. If you missed it, our opponent cast uh, Village Rights on the Kroxa before it left the battlefield. So now they're going to reveal our Fatal Push. We'll be drawing a Twiddle. We just need, uh, I don't even want to say it out loud almost, but they're not to be a post-combat discard spell, and they don't have one. Okay. So now we draw the Twiddle. Let's go get a Lotus Field. Blue, blue, play the field. Sacrifice two lands, play the twiddle. Okay, there are so many blood moons this league. Or moon effects, I should say. I have a thought that I'll share at the end of the league. Uh, I've had this idea for a while, but I feel like now might be the time where I try it before this 5k, but stick around, I'll talk about it at the end. But it's thinking pretty hard about my Underworld Breach here. Okay, cast the Twiddle, untap the field. Yep. Okay. Untap again. Remove some lands. Cast Twiddle again. Storm 5. Let's play Wish from Hand. Why not? It's another card to escape. Now we have 7 cards in Graveyards from 6. Hmm. Probably just do the Tome Scour thing. I was thinking about getting Q and just trying to Grape Shop, but I think we end up just short. So it looks like we've gotten game number two from our opponent, and there's going to be a game number three. Okay. Let's escape a wish here. Okay, so those have been exiled. So now I just have to twiddle double grip shot. 
I probably shouldn't exile the uh, scour. That seems wrong. Yes, I'd like to untap it. Half a red. Oh, the grape shot's in her deck. Glad I realized that. Okay, so we have to keep on scouring ourselves. Wish, wish, visions. And there's grape shot. Okay. So game three coming right up in just a second. And a friendly reminder, if you haven't already, open up the description, join our Discord. It's worth it, I promise. It's a great community. Lots of brilliant minds in there. Definitely go check it out. All right, game three versus Rakdos. I think this is ultimately fine. Glyphs into Ragavan. Classic. Yep. Draw. That was a good one. Um, let's start off on a bobble targeting ourselves. I don't hate that as a draw. All right, let's just play the strand. Draw the twiddle. We have a turn three right now, assuming like nothing terrible happens to us. Okay, so Rags is going to knock us to 18. Ludia Delta was the exile card. Womp, okay. Blood Moon. So we're going to go fetch the basic, cast Consider, and then next turn we're going to slide in the Lotus Field underneath the moon and hope that eventually we can just find a bounce spell. Yeah, we're going to bend that. Okay, so Blood Moon's going to resolve. Back in my day, we had to cast Desperate Ritual into that. All right, so Grape Shot was an interesting draw here. Let's kill the monkey, try to keep our opponent off mana. We have three bounce spells in our deck that would win the game on the spot. One of the interesting aspects right now is that our opponent cannot uh, play a Dothy Voidwalker. Ah, uh, they had a second Ragavan. I should have known! Alright, so we're going to fall to 15. And you might be thinking, watching this video, like, Bryant, isn't it risky to board in Grape Shot versus the Ragavan deck? Sort of? But you could always set it up so that way, instead of using Grape Shot, you just make a bunch of Ooze tokens. Alright. Um, I think I'm just going to cast Consider. Yes, put that to the graveyard. I don't think I'm allowed to transmute this even from hand, right? Or can I? I guess I could. If I hit the other basic. Let's keep it in hand for now. Three bounce spells to win them all. Okay. Ragavan is back. We're going to fall to 13 life. No! Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Two bounce spells to win them all. We do have an EE to get with the Teleria West, but EE cannot get up to three in this deck, so we cannot blow up the Blood Moon that way. Ah, oh, that was heartbreaking. Let's cast Visions. Play a land and pass. Okay, so Rags is going to put us to 11. Alright, and they're passing. Draw. Boom! Hell yeah! Get out of your Blood Moon. Go back to hell. Uh-oh. Lotus Field is now active. Go get that basic island. Twiddle. Twiddle. We don't have a Pact in our deck to go get with the Teleria West just in case our opponent had something. Part of me is like, should I just go get Eve? But I don't think that's correct. 
Like, what are the odds that our opponent has, like, a ravenous trap or something? Like, it doesn't seem probable. All right, play in real breach. And that is the match. We went 3-2, and two, defeating the Rakdos midrange deck twice. We lost to... Zoomer Jund and Hammer Time that had silence in it, which just isn't standard. It's tough to uh like like I knew that our opponent had silence, but I don't think you're supposed to for the sake of the video, so I chose not to keep packed in. What was the other match went over? Uh Rug Rhinos or Shardless Rhinos, whatever you'd like to call it. So let's go talk about this deck list a little bit, because I do have a few thoughts. I don't think the deck list that I played in this league is entirely perfect. So let's go find our Three color Grixis Lurus Lotus Breach deck. So we lost the first round because I only had one EE in the deck. Where if we had a second E to this board, maybe we have a better shot against Zoomer Jund. I still believe that Slaughter Pact is really good. We didn't face burn in this league. So you're probably watching this going like Bryant, Slaughter Pact never came up. It's not that good. You did cast Fatal Push a few times. I sort of agree with you. Other than the fact that we didn't play against the matchups where Slaughter Pact was really good. We did board it in against Hammer, but we never really drew it. So you could probably cut one of these, whichever one suits your preference. I think ultimately this decision doesn't really matter, uh, but one of those could be the cut. You could also decide, hey, Brian, I'm not trying to beat Graveyard Hate uh, with Ave anymore. And you could also cut the Ave, which... Is something you can do i haven't cast the eve in a while i thought about it right there in game number three match five but i didn't end up pulling the trigger Ave is by far the best way that you can beat things like leyline of the void or multiple pieces of hate but i don't know if that's where you want to be i'd certainly be interested in your thoughts so i have another thought of something let's open up a new copy because i don't want to mess up my current deck list so if we think about legacy doomsday Legacy Doomsday plays 16 free counter spells, and instead of playing things like Chain of Vapor, they just never let anything resolve that actually matters. So I've been thinking about this, and I've had this idea for a while, but I've been talked out of it, and I've never got to try it. So what if instead of playing the strategy that we're doing right now, which is use Inquisition and Pact and Negation to stop all of our opponent's stuff, what if instead of doing that, we just played Force and Negation in our deck? So you're going to say, Brian, Force doesn't protect you on your combo turn. I'm not an idiot. I'm aware of that. But it does stop things like Alpine Moon and Blood Moon, which are the main ways that I lose when I play this deck. And I'm not saying to cut Pact Negation and Inquisition entirely. There's probably room for them somewhere in the 75. But let's go add in Force and Negation. Like, this is just me brainstorming at the moment. I'm not saying that this is going to be a final list. So let's say I want to play 4 Force and Negation. I'd probably not play like two packs and then maybe you keep like two inquisition and you only play three fours uh we do have quite a few blue cards in this deck so i'd probably want to try four fours just to start off or maybe you don't play any discard because discard's so bad against ragavan and you just have this so that way you have 11 non-blue cards in your deck uh if you really wanted up the blue count you could cut the bobbles for sleight of hands but right now, let's count the blue cards. Uh, so 6, 10, 18, 20, 24 blue cards. It's a lot. Uh, the bobbles could be slights. That said, bobble still just way better, in my opinion. It fills the graveyard really quickly for Breach, and that's what matters. So, and you get the synergy with Breach, you know, just like Turbo Breaching, or the synergy with Loris. So this is something I'm interested in trying that I haven't got to do yet. So maybe I'll play this in another league before the 5k just to see how it is. Um, maybe it's just a terrible idea and I shouldn't do it. That's also a possibility. Um, but one thing that I like about this is that it does sort of what I like about Slaughter Pact. And maybe if you're playing Force and Negation, you don't have to play a sideboard Pact, which is possible. Um, I don't know why I did that. Oh, it's because there's already two in the board. So maybe you don't have to play a Slaughter Pack. So what I like about Slaughter Pack is against Hammer, you can tap out and continue your game plan while protecting yourself. So you can tap out turn two for Wishclaw and then have Force and Negation up. That's the idea here. And maybe you don't run Fatal Push. Maybe you just want more blue cards. 
So instead of running Fatal Push, you have two more bounce spells in the board or something like that, or maybe you have another pack negation. I'm not sure. I am always open to listening to everyone's thoughts, but I think that this might be worth exploring just because Force does stop the one of the few cards this deck cares about. So I've already said I'm interested in your thoughts. That's all I've got today. Uh, I've got to go do other stuff, but thank you for watching. A 3-2 isn't the best result, but it wasn't bad. We faced five high caliber level decks. We also faced an Oddity Cyborg card. It is what it is. I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> See you next time. Keep storming. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.